I'd like to welcome Sally Lego to the stand from Meat Livestock Australia, um, Program Manager for Adoption within Meat Life Livestock Australia, uh, to present Ag Tech and best management practice when it comes to adoption. Welcome, Sally. Uh, thanks, Graham, and afternoon, everyone. Uh, I quickly just want to take you through how we can achieve uh, adoption both of technology and of um, best management practices. Um, I've got quite a bit to run through. I've got the clock running, so uh, I'm aware that beer o'clock is coming up quickly. Uh, so look, I just want to take you through what the challenges are associated with adopting new technologies, um, highlight some of the technology investments uh, that MLA is making at the moment, um, and then just look at some of the existing technologies that we do um, have and can utilise at the moment and how um, producers can get involved. Uh, when I think about adoption in the red meat industry, I think about that approximately we're talking 100,000 red meat producers across the country um, who are operating businesses uh, both on a so small and extensive scale um, across a large area, um, fairly isolated. So there's a number of challenges that we have there. Um, just highlighting within a, um, South Australia, based off the ABARES data, uh, most recent data, um, we have about 10.2 million uh, head of sheep uh, in the flock, representing about 16% of the national flock, uh, and a million head of cattle representing 4% in the national herd. Speaking with my PERSA colleagues, um, I believe the, the sheep flock in South Australia has certainly declined since, say, the, the heights of the 90s. Um, so like all um, agricultural industries, as we move forward, facing some of the challenges we have with climate change, uh, how can we do more with less? And I think this is the opportunity that technology really offers us, is how can we use technology to help us drive um, our production and profitability as businesses. So critical success factors in seeing technologies being adopted on farm. Um, anything that can decrease operational costs for the business is obviously going to be of appealing. And we've certainly seen that today. Um, I think some of the remote water point uh, monitoring technology really highlights this. If you don't need to do uh, a water run two, two or three times a week, if you only need to do it once um, because you can utilise that technology, there's a huge savings in fuel and labour. Um, any technology that can increase production, like, say, walkover weighing, where you might be able to market animals at an appropriate time before they lose weight, again, increases the profitability for the business and I think makes sense for producers to utilise. And the other critical success factor is making life easier for producers and freeing up more time uh, in order to, to focus on other areas in the business. I think the greatest opportunity that we've got in going forward into the year, into, into the future, is the use of data. We've certainly seen today uh, a great range of technologies that are utilising a whole host of sensors and producing a great deal of data. The opportunity we have now is the analysis of that data and what you as producers are going to do as a response to that information that you've received and how you can enact a better time decision to make a greater gain in production and profit. Changing gears a little bit, I just wanted to highlight a um, investment that MLA has undertaken in partnership with SIBO Labs um, around what's called the Australian Feed Base Monitor. So this is satellite uh, pasture monitoring um, based on capturing data associated with estimates for total standing dry matter as well as ground cover percentage. Now this gives data to producers in order for them to make assessments for feed on offer or feed budgeting um, as well as to monitor ground cover as a means of determining the condition of the pasture. Hopefully it's at least stable if not increasing ground cover. Uh, this satellite monitoring that we've partnered with SIBO Labs around is looking at a resolution of one hectare per pixel and would be updated every five days. The data that's going to be turned out will be on an average um, for the entire property or what's being referred to as a parcel. Uh, and this parcel will be linked to the property identification code or LPA um, area. The really exciting thing is that from the 1st of July 2022, we will be offering this to every red meat producer in Australia for free. Um, so if you're not a member of MLA or have um, set up your My MLA account, can I really encourage you to do that before the 1st of July because this is a great opportunity to utilise this data. Um, not only will you get 
obviously the monthly information on what your total standing dry matter is, but you'll also be able to access um, seasonality data. So that's uh, this graph down here. So you'll be able to see what that total standing dry matter has looked like over different seasons and be able to compare where this season is sitting for other years. Now I'm sure you've got other data points um, that you're utilising for that, but this is just again another resource and data source that will be able to utilise. Changing gears again. Uh, so thinking about some of the existing technologies that we know are already in practice um, that the industry can use. Things like electronic identification of individual animals. Um, this obviously can be utilised in partnership then with say walkover weighing um, or even when you're doing pregnancy scanning or testing of cattle. Also just wanted to flag um, breeding values. If you're looking at um, rebuilding your herd in response to drought, making sure that you're buying in the best genetic merited animals through the use of EBVs in cattle or ASBVs is really powerful information that you can be utilising. But I did just want to highlight, these technologies are not new, they've been around for some time, but we still have limited use of them by producers. And um, based on some research out of the University of Adelaide, they've highlighted that pregnancy scanning in sheep, or sorry, for you in ewes, uh, we're only seeing about 40 to 50% of producers are scanning their entire ewe herd. And, and only 30% of those producers that are scanning their ewes are actually scanning for multiples. This is a huge opportunity for the industry um, in trying to produce more lambs and increase productivity. So just wanted to flag here a couple of reasons why scanning for use is beneficial. One, obviously it helps you identify your dry, single and twin bearing ewes and for ewes and maidens. This allows you to tailor your feed on offer based on the pregnancy status of those dries, uh, on those ewes or market um, the animals appropriately as well. Uh, again, allocating the right paddock to the pregnancy status of those ewes um, and managing mob size. So say for your twin bearing ewes, you might want to pop them into a more uh, sheltered paddock and have a smaller mob size so that you can um, improve the condition score of those pregnant ewes. Further from um, the research from the University of Adelaide highlighted that if you can increase the condition score for your twin bearing ewes, from 2.3 to 3.2, you're going to get 24% additional lambs at marking. That's a huge gain for your business. So the question is, can you afford not to scan? Uh, so this is some data that's just come through from a um, economic cost benefit analysis that we've completed um, with the University of Adelaide. This final report will be out soon, but I've been able to get a copy of some of this data to share with you today. Uh, the modelling was based on 300 different scenarios across all of Southern Australia. And as part of that, there was some inherent costs that were factored in. And I think these are also a good guide for anyone who's thinking about scanning their use and what the costs may be. So um, the modelling pulled together what the contractor costs might be. So if you're just looking at um, wanting to scan just say to identify your dries or pregnants, uh, that's probably going to work out by the time you factor in the contractor's costs your costs on farm and any associated costs such as um, fuel or repairs and maintenance on infrastructure, it's looking at about 83 cents per ewe. Uh, if you're looking at, if you wanted to um, identify whether there's multiples, uh, this cost slightly increases to $1.17 per head uh, that you're scanning. So relatively cost efficient. This is the really interesting part. So then they looked at what was the result in the profitability or the benefit that comes from doing that. And for the 300 scenarios, they utilised your time of lambing, so whether you're in autumn, spring or winter uh, lambing, the type, the genotype that you might be having, so whether, you're, um, whether you've got merinos or merino use with a terminal sire or you've got a maternal type, uh, then looking at your growing season. So a long, long growing season of say nine months, medium growing season of say 6.5 months, or if you're in the cereal sheep zone, a short growing season. But the really interesting part in all of this is that for every ewe, you will make a profit if you're scanning. So on average, it worked out at $5.75 per head uh, in benefit, 
there is a range across here, but anyone who uh, is, is lambing earlier in the season, and obviously with a longer growing season, you're obviously going to have higher condition on your ewes, so you will see greater finish as well on your lambs. I guess I just wanted to highlight that there is absolute financial benefit in there for producers in making the effort to scan for multiples. Look, and just quickly, I wanted to wrap up there. Um, I know we're tight on time, but I did just want to flag that if there's anything here, say from the technologies that you've learned about today or best management practices that you want to try on farm, and you're a little bit worried that it's a bit risky to go out and maybe put it in place for the whole property, um, we've got a number of different initiatives that you can get involved with where you can get some support from MLA and other partners. So I'll just quickly talk you through them. We're, uh, I've got a new adoption initiative focused on sheep reproduction uh, called Towards 90. This program is focused on achieving 90% survival rates in single and twin uh, ewes. Now there'll be a series of focus farms, field days, training modules associated with this program. Uh, I've flagged the website there. Producers can jump on in and register their interest to participate. There will be a focus farm based out of Western um, Victoria, which producers from this region would be very welcome to participate in. I also just wanted to flag that our producer demonstration science program is open for applications at the moment. So if yourself and your neighbours are interested in trialling some of the new technologies on your own farm and learning together, why not come together and put together a project, make a submission by the 12th of May. We will offer up to $25,000 per project um, for you to trial that technology. So I just uh, flag that there. Even if you can't make this year's submission, we run this call every year. So even spending the next 12 months to work out what you might want to trial on farm and put a submission in for next year. Uh, we also offer our profitable grazing systems uh, program. Uh, this is a series of training courses as well as one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with experts uh, and advisors in the field. Uh, and these cover a whole range of areas, um, including lifting lamb survival, meet the market, which is focused on um, practices you can put in place to improve your um, lambs making the processing requirements. Uh, also, as well as pay dirt south, um, a whole host of other programs there around what you can do with your pastures uh, to improve the live weight gain that you're getting from that. Finally, I also just wanted to flag the Australian Wool Innovations Lifetime New Management course. Again, an, another great course, well recognised for um, the practices that you can learn from that in how to implement getting the greatest um, gain from your sheep reproductive herds. I will pull it up there. I'm sorry, I've covered a lot of information. Um, I just also wanted to include my contact details and also Andrew Morelli's, who was meant to be speaking here today and uh, you've had to deal with myself being here. Thank you.